Hey everybody, welcome back to the Combo Couch. I'm Fiorella. I, uh, guys, I wanted to talk about Bernie because I, <laughs> you know, I've been a Bernie supporter for the last five years and in a matter of months, I have seen him uh, go from a fighter to just the hologram of of what he used to be just a, a mere two-dimensional version uh and a sad one at that and it doesn't please me at all to say these things uh to you know talk about bernie in this way but this is something that a lot of sanders supporters need to come to terms with this is something that they need to accept and a lot of people are still on the stage of denial when it comes to this um so Bernie basically, okay, went from opposing the security state, opposing the CIA, opposing the military industrial complex in his younger years to embracing it and actually even admitting uh, or pretending is the better word, pretending that the deep state doesn't exist, right? Pretending that the, that the election fraud is fake, it's, it's conspiracy, uh, mocking it, right? Mocking these things because of Trump. Again, we have that Trump derangement syndrome situation, right? And Glenn Greenwald alluded to this uh, issue that we, a lot of us on, you know, the anti-imperialist, anti-security um, state left have been talking about, right? And he wrote this great article and he said, after the deep state sabotaged his presidential bid, Bernie Sanders mocks those who believe it exists, also ridiculing rigged elections and fake news, two other weapons used on him, the Vermont senator's relationship to the Democratic Party descends from loyal support to abject subservience. And it absolutely does. And it, it's taken five years, truly, for, for Bernie to go from uh, somebody that was sort of challenging the, the status quo in 2016, and then his run um, in 2020, you could see the shift already there. And then, of course, now, uh, with the whole Joe Biden is a good friend, Joe Biden is going to be the best, most progressive president since FDR bullshit and his mocking of literally the deep state election integrity, etc. Um, it's like, bam, he is now entirely compliant, entirely subservient, entirely subservient to it. Uh, Glenn said, reflecting his 2020 strategy of trying to appease the Democratic establishment in lieu of his more successful 2016 strategy of proudly positioning himself as its adversary, Sanders by this point had repeatedly echoed the maximalist conspiracy theory about Trump and Russia, leaving him with little room to maneuver once the Cold War tactic was predictably deployed against him. After suggesting the leak to the Post was intended to harm his campaign, he had no other options beyond sputtering with the faux toughness about how he would show Putin who was boss. So this is alluding to the the uh, the, the leak that said, ooh, Putin wanted Bernie Sanders as president. And if you guys recall, there was a video where uh, reporters caught Bernie uh, saying, ha, you know, mocking the Washington Post for, for talking about that. But simultaneously, Bernie Sanders had already been uh, validating the CIA talking points regarding Putin and, and Russia gate. He had validated that. And that was one of the critiques that a lot of us were saying, Hey, this isn't cool. But a lot of people were like saying, well, you know, it's, it's Bernie and he'll, he'll come around. He's just doing it because he doesn't want to get the attacks from the establishment. Well, they're going to fucking attack him anyway. Right. But, uh, it, you know, it was definitely a criticism that I, um, I pushed to the fact that he was Russia gating and, you know, we should have actually pushed it harder. We should have been more critical of him in, in retrospect of this because this is, it's not about, you know, Russia gate as much as what that means, the significance behind it. That was right after he had won Vegas, right? But after that, you know, Obama made the phone calls, et cetera. Um, he lost South Carolina. He began losing other states. Then we had COVID and they used COVID as the excuse to shut everything down. And even though Joe Biden told people to go to the polls and, you know, be, like we blame a lot of people want to blame Trump for COVID, but Joe Biden was telling people to go vote during the pandemic and people forget that. Uh, and yes, nobody in government handled the pandemic uh, with efficacy and, and seriousness from the start during Bernie's earlier career. And if we recall, like 1986 Bernie, that Bernie, I always talk about, you know, he talks about Cuba, he talks about Russia, he talks about socialism freely. 
that was an actual like socialist Bernie. Like it's not like Bernie was always like a democratic um socialist. No, that's what he became when he wasn't in office uh on a big scale. When he was just a mayor, he was actually opposing the security state, the deep state and the military industrial complex. As soon as he started getting higher up in positions is when he, you, you can see a shift. So uh, Glenn says during his early political career, beginning with his two term as mayor of Burlington in the 1980s, he frequently denounced the CIA and other intelligence agencies, including when he returned from trips to Nicaragua and Cuba. There are few national figures in U.S. politics, if there are any, who know better than he about the true face of this permanent Washington power faction. That is why it's so jarring to see him on Thursday mock the idea that there is such a thing as the quote, deep state, the very entity that did so much to help sink his 2020 campaign. I mean, by the deep state, what do you mean, Fiorella? Is this, or Glenn, this is the question, you know, we always get asked. The deep state is basically just a, um, <clears throat> a short term for the CIA, the NSA, the military industrial complex, the Pentagon, the security state, and all these uh, organizations that work behind the scenes um, to manipulate presidents, to manipulate government, in, to do what they wanted to do, who overthrow governments, who who literally spy on Americans. It's real. Just because you call it deep state, because some people on the right say that doesn't mean it's not real. It's long been defined now in the last uh, few years. So if you don't understand what that is, look it up. Don't just dismiss it because somebody on the right says it, which is uh, a lot of the left's automatic go to, oh, well, you sound like a Republican when you say deep state. It's like, get over it. What what does sound like a Republican mean? Well, you sound like a neoliberal. Like, and a neoliberal, it, lis, neoliberalism isn't inherently only a democratic thing. Ronald Reagan was a Republican and he literally pushed the, the b neoliberalism to its peak. He's the reason we have all these issues uh, subsequently now. And that's, that's something that these people don't want to talk about and not just automatically assume that it's a right-wing thing or a right-wing talking point just because a right-winger adopted to using the word. I'm sorry, you don't get to, to take that and make it into something Thing it's not. So now Bernie Sanders, of course, sounds like a typical neoliberal establishment Democrat with the way he's been tweeting, with the way he's been dismissing all of these things. And, you know, I've called him out a lot on these issues, but it's uh, it's important that we actually sit down and discuss it because a lot of people still want to pretend that Bernie Sanders is is this person they thought that he was. Um, and he no longer is. And 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 if you don't change your point of view with new inf as new information has come in, then you're being disingenuous. And I'm not going to be disingenuous just because, you know, a lot of these uh, lefty YouTubers uh, made their money off of worshiping Bernie Sanders and never criticizing him. That's not real news. That's not real uh, independent media. That's just, you're basically a cuck and you're basically regurgitating the mainstream media narrative for clicks. And that's what a lot of the indie left has become, um, indie YouTuber left. Um, they're not even independent, half of them, more than half of them. Um, and so it's important that we get perspective that is actually uh, <laughs> nuance and is actually honest. Mocking the rigged election saying, of course, hurts me the, the most, but we'll go over that in a minute because Bernie did say Trump's rants about a, quote, fraudulent election are not a joke. <laughs> they are the most significant attack against our democracy in history. If the election system's, quote, rigged, if the media's, quote, fake, if federal officials are part of a, quote, deep state, who can you trust? You got it, a dictator. So Trump is a dictator to him, right? He said it many times. Trump is a sexist, racist, tyrant, dictator, brutal, blah, 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 et cetera. Um, the uh, elections, our election system isn't rigged. Uh, wrong, Bernie. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Our election system is entirely rigged. It's been rigged for decades, okay? It didn't start with Trump saying it. We've been saying it. Progressives have been telling you, literally, to your face, that you got cheated twice. So seriously, like, this is just sad. It's disgusting. Um, and if the media is, quote, fake, he literally criticized the media because multiple times, because he knows the fucking media wrote stories about him that were false. Washington Post, 
16 stories about Bernie that were false in 2016. 16 stories attacking him. Negative, 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 negative. All of them. Bernie Sanders was criticizing the mainstream media. He doesn't even like the mainstream media. Who is this guy? That's not Bernie Sanders. I don't know who the fuck took over. I, I, I don't know what's going on. It's like the fucking Hunger Games here. And he's like PETA, uh, PETA Malark, where, where PETA is like being held hostage in the Capitol. I don't know if that's happening, but I'm just saying like he has to be held responsible for that. Because even if that's the case, he's still responsible for what he's putting out, for what his whoever wrote his tweets is putting out. He's still fucking responsible. He has to be held accountable for that. He doesn't get a pass because he's Bernie. I'm sorry, he doesn't. And I'm one of those people that has been saying that as somebody who really supported Bernie wholeheartedly for the last fucking five years, and as somebody that was was part of this movement, it's not like I'm enjoying this, but this is what we have to point out. He doesn't get a pass. Yes, thank you, Bernie, for inspiring millions of people to uh, stand up and realize that they weren't alone, and forever I will be grateful for that. But you don't get to say shit like this and get away with it. And, and progressives shouldn't give him a fucking pass and continue to like him just because he's still opposing Trump. He's literally being a neoliberal right now, doing the same fucking shtick that these neoliberals are doing. And for what? What did he get out of it? He got nothing. And worse, we got nothing. We got nothing when it comes to Medicare for all. We got nothing when it comes to a stimulus. We got nothing when it comes to a Green New Deal. Oh, thank you for now opposing this, the bullshit crap stimulus that Nancy Pelosi just gave us, the fucking piece of shit stimulus that cut in half, less than half, than what Trump was offering, he making Trump look like the better fucking uh, person, which is, trust me, uh, difficult to do, but hey, y'all manage, Democrats, and it's it's really unnerving to me that more progressives aren't, aren't even doing this. Why? Because you're afraid of getting attacked? Well, sorry, we tell the truth here. That's it. The truth is the truth, period. And Bernie Sanders is absolutely uh, breaking hearts and breaking um, the trust and the 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 work that a lot of progressives did to get him elected by turning into this this ugh, like piece of what he once was and just just being so manipulated by the establishment. So it's a servant to them. And Glenn goes on to say Sanders is mocking the idea of fake news after he himself has repeatedly insisted for years that corporate mainstream media outlets like the Washington Post are biased against them due to its ownership by Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos in the process provoking those media outlets to compare him to Trump in the way he attacks the press. Like Bernie Sanders was literally destroyed by the mainstream media at every turn. Why is he now pretending that they're not propagandists, that they're not owned by the, the military industrial complex, that they, they do not put ads for Raytheon, Boeing, Lockheed Martin? Why is he pretending that they're, they're genuine, uh, real people, that the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, MSNBC, they're not fake news just because you don't like Trump and the right and Fox? Fine, don't like them. But also, talk about this. No, you're going to pretend that you didn't fucking say that these last five years? What the hell is going on? Let us also leave to the side the sad, un, the sad willingness of Sanders to mock the idea that U.S. elections might be rigged, given that the Democratic Party systemically cheated in 2016 to prevent him from defeating Hillary Clinton, to the point that the top five officials of the DNC were forced to resign when WikiLeaks published emails proving their corrupt rigging efforts. Even Elizabeth Warren and former DNC chairwoman Donna Brazile acknowledged that the 2016 Democratic primary was rigged against Sanders, a claim he now apparently believes is a province only of the dictators and French conspiracists. First of all, Trump isn't a, a dictator. If Trump was a dictator, uh, <laughs> if, if Trump was a dictator, we would see something very different right now. Trump's not a dictator. He's a narcissist, but he's not a dictator. Um, and this idea that he's a dictator is just fucking a neoliberal talking point to fear monger people to vote for Joe Biden. And now with the real dictatorship that we have is the dictatorship of the corporatocracy of the oligarchy. That's the real dictatorship here. It's not a fucking symptom in Trump. Um, uh, second of all, the election issue, of course, 
2016, as we've talked about here, not just Donna Brazil, Elizabeth Warren, the machines, the ballots, Hillary Clinton, WikiLeaks, all, all of that was absolutely, you know, essential. And it's unfortunate we didn't have it in 2020. So people wouldn't be saying that there's no fraud. Um, but uh, that's because Julian Assange is in jail and, you know, WikiLeaks and all of that happened. But this is, I mean, look at, look at what's happened since then. We've actually begun protecting Silicon Valley and protecting these, these people and, and maligning and punishing journalists like Julian Assange and, and whistleblowers like uh, Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning instead of praising them. Um, and we have nobody to tell us what we, now what we were told in 2016. And it was admitted in the court of law. So it wasn't just Brazil and Warren, it was actually admitted into a court of law. The DNC admitted that they can go into a back room and decide who they want. And they literally admitted this and people went up to Bernie Sanders with, with, with evidence and data and said, hey, do this and, and follow, follow this. And he re refused to do it because he didn't want to be Ralph Nader. So who gives a fuck? They were always going to Ralph Nader him anyway. And that was, the, the, it's the dumbest excuse I've ever heard. And the fact of the matter is, it, it, this happened. This is true. And he's pretending that that didn't happen just because Trump is doing it now. Because Trump is doing what he was supposed to be fucking doing in the first place. It's, it's, to somebody that spent years pushing Bernie Sanders, it is like, oof, it is like sad. I feel sad for him, but I also feel sad for progressives who are still buying this shit, right? A deep state lurks within and over the U.S. government is now treated in establishment liberal circles as if it is some new right-wing conspiratorial concoction rather than what it is, a long-standing reality recognized long before Trump by political science scholarship, left-wing foreign policy critiques, and mainstream journalism. This post-World War II truth of the U.S. deep state entered mainstream discourse when Dwight Eisenhower used this 1961 fa farewell address to warn Americans that in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex because the potential for disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. I mean, this has long been there. This has long been been there, the deep state and the CIA and the NSA and all these, uh, the powers that be, the oligarchy, the people in power behind these presidents has been an issue forever. Hello, who assassinated JFK, who assassinated Robert Bobby Kennedy, who assassinated Fred Hampton, Malcolm X, the, the vast majority of these people who stood into direct threat to these, uh, the security state, the deep state made up of all of these agencies. That's long been a fact. It doesn't take uh, a Trump to bring it up. And that's, and that's the point that Glenn and uh, so many others like, uh, like us here have been trying to make. This is, this has nothing to do with Donald Trump and everything to do with what's behind every president, but you are being so fucking distracted by hating Donald Trump because here it is. Here's the, here's boogeyman. That you, you don't even pay attention to the, what's really happening here. And Bernie Sanders is a tool for the establishment now. He is a tool. And that's what's happened. And you don't get to pretend that it's not happening and that he's not wrong when he does this simply because you like him. And you don't get to pretend that what he's saying is true because you hate Trump. Because that's disingenuous. That is infactual. That is not real journalism. And to the people who are doing that, they're misguiding you on purpose because they have a buck to make. Democrats and allied media outlets were cheering reports that unelected security state officials were concealing information they did not want the elected president to have, and more recent reports that they misled him about true positions in Syria to prevent his withdrawal efforts. Classic deep state coup behavior whereby unaccountable military intelligence officials prevent the elected president from implementing policies they decide are misguided. Exactly. Donald Trump was lied to in regard to Syria. And he was maligned recently because he wanted to remove troops from Afghanistan. Okay, maybe he's doing it because of political reasons. So what? It's still a good thing. So many people were arguing against that because they hate Trump. Like, it's disgusting. And, and the establishment is turning all of these issues that are so important, like censorship and election integrity, into a right-wing talking point, which is why I, Pasta and I have been so adamant about telling you that election fraud did happen against Trump, even though we don't like Trump, because it has to be said. 
Because it's not about Trump. It's about the fact that these people are so fucking powerful that they can do this and they're going to continue manipulating everything and you won't even notice it because they're going to put a boogeyman in front of you. They're going to distract you in one way or the other, whether it's Russiagate or whether it's Trump. They're going to do it. And it's people on both sides of this party because it's a one big aisle. It doesn't matter. It's the establishment and the oligarchy. They represent each other. They represent themselves. They don't represent you. They don't represent me. This is, this is, uh, I mean, you can't deny this at this point. Back in the day, when people were actually doing real journalism in some of these mainstream outlets, some of them admitted that, that the deep state was a thing, right? And now it's like a right-wing talking point. And we, we got to stop that. We got to, got to stop that. There was this uh, piece in the Washington Post called The Secret America, A Hidden World Growing Beyond Control. And um, it said the government has built a national security and intelligence system so big, so complex, and so hard to manage. No one real, no one really knows if it's fulfilling its most important purpose: keeping citizens safe. The top secret secret world the government created in response to the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, and this is in uh, July 19th of 2010 has become so large, so unwieldy, and so secretive that no one knows how much money it costs, how many people it employs, how many programs exist within it, or exactly how many agencies do the same work. These are some of the findings of the two-year investigation by the Washington Post that discovered that amounts to an alternative geography of the United States, a top-secret America, and from public view and lacking in through oversight. After nine years of unprecedented spending and growth, the result is that the system put in place to keep the United States safe is so massive that its effectiveness is impossible to determine. And of course, this is um, from the Washington Post, which is surprising, but you know, um, this is what Glenn pointed out. I mean, this is the, everybody knows this is real. Like they're just gaslighting you right now. They're pretending that this isn't real. It's it's absolutely real. It's been real for a long time. Um, and here's to the point of back again uh, that I mentioned before. Neera Tandon is Joe Biden's choice as the director of office and um, management and budget. And she's not just a Center for American Progress um, ringleader, but she's also a party operative, a consultant type, an anti-progressive, anti-Medicare for all as it gets, has consistently been misaligning, insulting progressives, especially Bernie Sanders. Yet, she's put in such a position of power here. And she, you know, I mean, she's just vile. And and this is, this is who Bernie Sanders is supporting. He's supporting Biden. He's not really opposing this. He hasn't said a word about Neera Tandon. Joe Biden chose Neera Tandon as the director of Office of Management and Budget, the party operative who did more than any single individual over the last five years to vilify and defame not only Sanders himself, but his millions of most ardent supporters as racist, misogynist, and uniquely toxic poisons contaminating the body politic. Biden did so knowingly that Sanders will be depending on the outcome of the Georgia Senate runoffs next month. Either the chairman or ranking member of the Budget Committee responsible for Tandon's confirmation hearing they thus knowingly put Sanders in the position of having to play the good soldier by sheep herding the nomination uh, of a person who has spent years viciously attacking and lying about him and his most ardent followers. Again, this is like, it's, it's, it's unnerving, right? This is why a lot of progressives were so outraged with near Tandon being appointed to the Office of Management and Budget, but like, it's more than just her appointment. It's what it means. It's what's behind it. It's it's the the cutting off the hands, the 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 cutting off of the weapons of any sort of weaponry that the progressive movement has had. It's a direct attack and an insult into progressives and into Bernie Sanders. And he's just fucking taking it. He's not even saying anything about this. Nothing. And you should be angry about that. I fucking worked blood, sweat, and tears to get this man elected. And for what? For him to sit back and just let this happen because of Trump? Like, no, this is absolutely unacceptable. And, and the fact is, this is all being done on purpose by the Democratic establishment against you. And somehow, some of you still think you can reform this party. 
that you can somehow convince the squad to stand up to Nancy Pelosi, that you somehow can convince these people by asking them, hey, put, support Medicare for all, support a Green New Deal, give us a stimulus. They're, they're not going to listen to you if you ask nicely. You have to do direct actions. This is why it won't work because they have all the power and you just keep giving in, just like Bernie, keep giving in, giving in, stop giving in. Stop giving in. You have to stand your ground. Stand up once and for all and oppose them because this is what they're going to keep doing. Mocking you in your face, right in front. Neera Tannen gets to laugh. Gets to laugh because she has been appointed to such a powerful position as she has been completely destroying everything that progressives have ever wanted. And she gets away with it. On the election integrity issue, I would even go further in highlighting the election fraud, uh, where, where Glenn only um, highlighted a few key things. It's not just plague Bernie Sanders in 2016. We know, you know, the machines, the the voter rolls, we know, et cetera. We know all of this. But it was also used to get rid of Trump. Now, I don't have to like Trump to know that there were extreme anomalies, extreme anomalies that are completely just impossible without any sort of uh, manipulation. But no one on the left cares because it's Trump. Because they don't like Trump, right? And so it's only been me and Pasta talking about uh, uh, about election fraud at this level on the left. Everybody else has been completely silent or mocking it. Uh, hello, Michael Tracy, Aaron Matei. Um, and not coming from a place of understanding what goes on. We look at these machines. We go do the research. We don't just... This is the wheelhouse. And so the fact of the matter is, this has been something where the left has completely dropped the ball. And not, not just dropped the ball, but been completely flat out wrong. Flat out wrong. Uh, all these people mocking, all the TYT, Kyle Kolinsky, Sam Cedar, all, the, all these people. They're completely wrong on this. Uh, everybody, everybody. Status quo, all these people. They're entirely wrong on this. Mocking it. Um, and. It's because it's Trump and Giuliani and the right. And so it becomes so easy. It's the same thing with election fraud as it is with the deep state, the CIA, all of that, right? All of that. It's, it's, it's now become, oh, a right wing thing. It's not. It is, it is a people thing. They just want you to think it's a right wing thing so they can dismiss it. This is what they do. And so you got to go beyond the surface level understandings and get to the deeper, deeper understanding of everything. And it's not conspiratorial. Conspiratorial is what they want you to think, so you dismiss it. Sanders has sadly become, through Trump, he's become um, a water bearer for the neoliberal establishment. And not just the neoliberal establishment, but of course the deep state itself. And and instead of fighting for election integrity, right? Sadly, instead of being the one carrying the torch for it, it's now fucking Donald Trump. And, and it shouldn't have been. It sh we wanted it to be Bernie. Instead, it's Donald Trump. And of course, there are people on his on the right that don't want the truth either. So they're putting in their own little fucking narrative spin. Oh, the ghost of Hugo Chavez. Duh. That's all fake because it's it's done to dismiss it, right? You get the left to dismiss it. Boom, that's it. It's done. The right goes on their little thing. They continue hating commies. They continue hating socialists, talking about how, ooh, like the commies, the commies, the commies, and Venezuela and all this crap. Well, nothing gets resolved because you're fucking covering the truth with your own little fucking narrative. And that's what this establishment, the oligarchy wants. And Bernie Sanders is, is now uh, in complete alignment with them. 100%. The only people that actually want truth are, are the people. We actually want transparency. We want truth. We want to get to the bottom of this. Even people who don't understand election integrity, they want the truth. They don't realize what's being done. And this is on Bernie. He should have fought for election integrity and he didn't. And a lot of people were harassing Tim Canova for saying it, but he was absolutely right. He should have absolutely fought for election integrity from the start and he didn't. And he left him hanging. He left a lot of us hanging. In 2020, we of course had the Iowa app and we had the mail-in ballots and we had COVID and that was used as an excuse. Um, and then we had Obama and we had the mathematical anomalies happening too. And let me just remind you guys the mathematical anomalies that, that happened in 2020 with the machines and with the, the vote by mails. First of all, <laughs> uh, King County, Washington went for Biden, which is an impossibility, just that alone. If you know King County, Washington, it's like Seattle. It's 
literally Bernie, Bernie town. There's no way, um, that, that one sticks in, in my mind, ex uh, extremely well, but I have texts here and we've talked about this before, but I'm just going to go over it, uh, quickly. So you guys can see the, the way we, we, uh, put but Trump, Trump's numbers. And we went over the anomalies and the mathematical uh, statistics and everything else. We also w did that with Bernie and Biden in Texas. And it, it, it started out fine. Uh, it was reported, you know, at 31%. Sanders had 37,366 votes. And from 0% to 31%, he had 1,205 more votes than Biden per one percentage point for, for him. So that was pretty obvious. That's normal. Um, and you guys can see the figure there. At 40% reported, same thing. He uh, kept going up. He had 52,816 votes. He gained uh, 15,450 vote lead, 1,717 more votes per one percentage point for Sanders. At 42% reporting, um, this is where it started to shift, where we talked about Biden gaining all of a sudden 4,391. So he gained rapidly 2,196 votes per one percent point. For Biden, and then Biden gained 5,223 votes. And then from 43 to 46%, Biden gained 5,177 more votes per one percentage point. And he, so he gained 15,530. That was a big gain. Bernie Sanders never gained that much in one uh, swoop. And remember, this is Texas, and um, Bernie did typically better in, in, in red states. Uh, like Texas and um, West Virginia, like that against Biden and against Hil against Hillary in 2016, and um, it just it it didn't make sense. But it, it just starts getting worse and worse. If you look at how much Biden gained from 46 percent to 52 percent, he gained 18,376 votes or 3,063 more votes per one percentage point. Um, and then it just goes up from there. He just gained just a lot more. He gained 8,453 votes and then he just kept gaining. Um, and Sanders gained a small little amount, but Biden gained 4,000 more votes out of thin air, 4,310 votes to be exact. And then, um, he gained 12,763 votes. <laughs> or 4,254 votes for one percentage point. And at 55% to 61%, he gained 32,312 votes or 5,385 more votes per one percentage point than Sanders. And then from 40% to 61%, Biden gained Sanders by 84,204 votes. This is a dump, okay? And these dumps are mathematical anomalies. And then from 40 to 65%, when Biden came from behind and took the lead, he gained 89,919 more votes than Sanders. Sanders, on the other hand, received 1,320 more votes than one percentage point than Biden, even though he had a substantial lead in the beginning, a substantial but a normal lead. And then at the very end, you know, Biden had 32,938 more votes. Um, and then Sanders gained uh, 4,165. These are just showing you that these these numbers are completely uh, not normal. There's a, a belt. There's a curve that happens, and when that's how they're able to call things so early. Biden just kept gaining, gaining more, and um, the sad part of this this is this is what happened, right? This is I I was living it. I saw it. It was unnerving to see, but. When Sanders does this, when he dismisses election and fraud and thereby dismissing the need for election integrity, when he completely lies and opposes everything that I've worked, that other people have worked to expose, um, and everything that he himself has been a victim to, it, it, it causes for people to follow him into that. It causes people to who need a leader, who, who have deified him, who need somebody that they look up to, to like literally follow him into this dark hole that he's put himself in. And it's, that's not okay. And that shouldn't happen. And the left is then no longer opposing the establishment because they're going to follow Bernie. So what's happened is that the left, uh, or people who consider themselves left and who call themselves progressives have become just subservient to the establishment, just accept that they just want Medicare for all. And that's it. Like, that's the only difference. And so they're not really opposing 
what's going on. They're simply barely skating by. He's basically signing to the establishment and praising what they're doing in action. And this is how you kill a movement. This is how you kill Bernie and his movement. In a metaphorical sense, you kill Bernie, um, and then you kill this movement. It, it like it's I said, it took Democrats one si- cycle to turn progressives into uh, their little establishment minions, and that's what's happened, and that's what will continue to happen if we don't understand that what Bernie is doing, what a lot of the spot is doing, is not okay. It's false, and a lot of the things they're saying are completely uh, controlled opposition. They're not really opposing the status quo. They're not opposing Nancy Pelosi. They're not opposing Biden's picks. They're not saying anything about Julian Assange. They're not saying anything about censorship. They're not saying anything about election fraud. Uh, Don't count on that. They're mocking it instead. They're mocking all of this. And Bernie Sanders was the leader. So when he does this, other people are going to do it because they trusted him. And it's irresponsible and it falls on him and he needs to be held accountable to that. Grumpy Bernie Sanders said it really well. Bernie's 2016 movement got co-opted by liberals and the authoritarian imperialist left. The authoritarian left that hates the right so much that they they become that which they hate. You cannot question our elections because it's a right wing talking point. You can't say the deep state. Oh, you can't uh, agree with Donald Trump because he's a, a dictator fascist. That's what I mean by authoritarian left. They're not anti-imperialist. They just want Medicare for all. They're okay with bombing abroad. They're okay with bombing Syria, Libya, uh, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. They're okay with coups. It's fine. It doesn't fucking matter because that's as long as they're domestic is fine. And that's not how it works. I just wanted to have that fucking discussion because obviously not enough people are talking about this. Not enough people are highlighting that Bernie is fucking up here really bad. And he's screwing us all. A lot of us who did so much work to get him elected and it, it's got to be said, and it's it's not, oh, why, Fiorello, aren't you attacking Republicans more? Because you know who Republicans are. I know who Republicans are, and I don't need to attack them. I can't actually defeat this ideology with lies by not having the weapons needed, by not having the, the, the people needed to defeat them. They are literally the Democratic Party and these, uh, these fake progressives and, and people becoming little minions to the establishment like Bernie Sanders are literally taking away the arms to actually defeat the encroaching fascism by the establishment on both parties coming and attacking us. The establishment that denies us health care during a pandemic, the establishment that is ruining this economy at our expense uh, for corporations that is taking money from the working class to the 1%, that establishment, I can't fight them because you're still being duped into the Democratic Party. And people like Bernie Sanders are now turned into your enemy by doing that. And they're, they're a, a worse type of enemy because we, we love them. They were supposed to do good. They were, we were supposed to trust them. And that's why that's more dangerous. It's more dangerous. It's somebody that is, that is, that is supposed to be close to you and they're betraying you. And that's what's going on. That's why I'm going to point it out. And that's why more people should have the balls to point it out. But they don't. Because it's not click worthy. Because it makes you unpopular. Because it gets you called a right wing grifter. <laughs> if, I, if I wanted to be a right wing grifter, I would be a right winger. And I, a, and I would be making a lot of money. Or if I wanted to be a neoliberal, I would be making a lot of money. This isn't about money. This isn't about clicks. This is about telling the fucking truth. And this is what we've been doing here since day one. Telling the truth. And so... Unfortunately, Bernie Sanders is now a tool of the establishment, and he should be opposed and called out at every turn for everything he does wrong. And if he does something right, of course, I'm going to say, yes, he did a good thing. But as of now, I'm all seeing all talk. I'm not seeing any action. Same with the squad. Same with the vast majority of progressives. Um, And that's that. And that's the truth. It's hard to hear. Cognitive dissonance, it's hard to hear. But it's the truth. And as always, I will stick by the truth. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it, especially during this time. I know people are experiencing hardship. So anything you can do to help us, if you can't donate via PayPal, Patreon, um, Rockfin and endorse us, whatever it is, Super Chats, the tips on Rockfin, whatever you do, if you can't do any of that, just please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, get your friends to subscribe understand what's going on here. We, you know, we're trying to really be the the people that actually tell the truth and don't just fall into whichever echo chamber they want to fall into. So I really, truly appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Convo out. Peace.